high. Now it's a very common thing in the electronics design industry to measure the thermal performance of a product especially when you've got like a reasonably large system like uh, something like this that's got fans in it and you've got to manage the thermal performance I've talked about this a lot on the blog and well how do you measure it well there's many different ways to measure it but one of the big mistakes you can make one of the traps for young players is to measure things with the lid off like this and you've seen me do it in videos because I'm just getting like ballpark temperature measurements but as you should know the uh, with something like this that's got a fan in it with the lid off you're not going to get the true temperature measurement of the devices in there they're actually going to be hotter than the, what they should be why because you haven't got the proper thermal management and the airflow going over the devices over the heat sinks and things like that so really if you want to properly characterize and measure the temperature of a device or the thermal performance of your product you need to do it with the lid on and everything in place in and they could have uh, air ducting guides inside for example you've seen those uh, various times in product teardowns and things like that so that's all well and good but how do you measure the thermal performance with the lid on and of course one of the best tools these days and they're becoming lower and lower in cost are one of these uh, FLIR thermal imaging cameras this is the E8 very nice 320 by 200 resolution haha <laughs> brilliant and these are great for getting uh, thermal uh, measurements of your products like this overall thermal map and also individually uh, measuring the thermal performance without having to get your usual uh, multimeter and your thermocouple and trying to attach it and stuff like this these can work really well although ultimately a uh, thermocouple attachment is probably going to uh, end up being the most accurate these are great if you got the lid off but then your temperature measurements inside aren't going to be accurate so how do you solve it well you can't just whack the lid on because this is no good anymore and then you know, would uh, often you would have to uh, attach uh, thermocouples through the vent holes and then actually connect them to the devices you want to do then put the lid on and you've got to have multiple thermocouples and all sorts of things it's a really nasty piece of work so how can you measure the thermal performance, especially using one of these thermal imaging cameras with the lid on and with all your air flows in place? Well, there's a neat little trick you can use to do it. I'm gonna show you. Cling wrap, beauty. So taking a product like this as an example, uh, when you've got the lid off like this, yeah, the fan's going full ball, sucking out, trying to suck out the air, but where's the air coming from? Well, just around the inlet to the fan there it's not coming from anywhere else so it doesn't get to flow from the vent holes here and here that's what the system is designed for air flows into this hole into this hole over all of the electronics and then over these heat sinks here and then out the back like that that's how they've designed the thermal management in this product but with the lid off all of that's ruined it's just being sucked there there's no air flowing over either the electronics or more crucially these heat sinks at the back here and heat sinks are designed to work with air flowing over them they're really uh, you know if you just put them in still air they're not very efficient at all they're vastly more efficient with that air flowing over so if we take our thermal imaging camera here we can actually see parts of our product that are lit up there we can see individual chips and uh, relays down in there that are lit up you can set the coils on the relays are energized you can see our five heat sink devices up here you can see our transformer over in the corner and that's all fantastic but well these aren't a true temperature measurement you can see up in the uh, top left uh, corner of the screen there that uh, that device in there you know 70 80 odd degrees 85 degrees something like that but that's not what it will be with the lid on it'll be lower than that so to solve that problem yes we can actually use some cling wrap we can just put it over the top of the product where the lid is going to be or whatever covering it is on your particular product you want to uh, test and of course uh, being that on it works like a lid and it allows the air to flow exactly how it was designed in the system but as I'll demonstrate now it's pretty transparent although not hundred percent but pretty well transparent to that infrared heat energy so you'll be able to use your thermal camera to see right through this with all your airflow in place let's check it out 
All right, let's try this out and see if it works. I've got my Fleur E8 mounted on a an extension arm here. It doesn't have, annoyingly, doesn't have a uh, tripod mount on it. I know you can physically hack them to actually add that, but uh, anyway, here we go. It's nice and set up. It's stable. It's actually uh, measuring that heat sink in there, see? Uh, so the top left... Uh, temperature up here, that's what the cursor right in the middle. 73.4, so that heat sink down in there is about 73 and a half degrees or thereabouts. So I'm going to get my cling wrap now, here we go, and I'm going to put it over it. Let's see if it changes. It will change, of course. There is some loss by doing this, but you'll notice that the heat map will stay exactly the same. It does not distort the map. So you can should be able to see it coming across. So it's 74, 74, and it's dropped to 79 and a half. So there you go, 70. So it's dropped by 4 degrees. That's instantly. Now if you leave it there, it might actually come back up to temperature if you leave it there long enough. So it's, yeah, it's got some loss. So your absolute uh, temperature is going to be out a bit. But you'll see that that heat map is still there. That image is not distorted at all. So there it is. Look at that. Fantastic. So four or five degrees drop, you can compensate for that, but the whole idea is that you can still see the thermal image of it and the flow, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to see the airflow as well through your product. Fantastic. Now if we take a look at the overall product here, we've got a temperature range, as you can see in the uh, right corner here, of you know 83 degrees down to about 27 at its lowest part here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and leave the uh, FLIR camera in position here and cover it with uh, cling wrap and actually see if we can see a difference. But what I'm going to do instead of having the fan uh, blowing out, I'm going to have the fan blowing back in and then see if we can see, maybe if we're lucky, some airflow coming out the holes out the side here, some air flowing into it, because otherwise most of the hot parts, as you can see, are up the back of the unit there. So this isn't a particularly great example from that aspect. So I'm just going to flip the fan around so that it blows back out. So I can simply just take that out and ta-da! Now it's blowing into the product and coming out the vent holes on the side. And, yeah, we should, maybe, if we're lucky, see a heat map. Ooh, there's my hand. And here we go. I've had the uh, cover, in quote marks, on for a little bit. And you can, maybe you can see a difference <clears throat> down in here. You can see that the heat has more spread and is flowing across here. You'd have to read individual uh, temperature points to actually see it. But the um, you can see that the thermal spread across these parts here has also changed and gone higher. But once again, you would have to get uh, in there and actually measure those individual uh, points. And you'll notice that the uh, maximum temperature to minimum temperature has also dropped as well. Now, I've been sneaky and I've covered up this uh, left-hand vent over here. So I've only got the air flowing out the right-hand vent. So you can actually probably see maybe some of the heat spreading across not not out this side but it's spreading in this direction like this it's probably hard to see not the best example but hopefully you can get the idea and if you've got one of these thermal cameras you can play around with something like this so if we move the camera over towards the side of the chassis over here you can see that this airflow is flowing out over this what would ordinarily be a cool area of the board over here and it's flowing all towards this exit uh, point over here this vent hole on the side because we're forcing air in at the back here and it's flowing over here and going there but once again you'd have to get in there and measure individual temperature points but you can see how the concept actually can work got this uh, Tektronix TDS3054 oscilloscope you've seen in a previous video and yes I've wrapped it all up check it out woohoo so 
as you know, in previous video, uh, this thing actually stops working. If you don't have the fan on, it overheats in like a couple of minutes and the software detects that and actually uh, shuts the thing down. So what I've done is I've wrapped it in plastic. It's dead wrapped in plastic. All right, and uh, I've basically sealed up all of this side. So the fan sucks in here like this over the main... Uh, ASIC down the bottom which actually gets hot the main ADC chipset and all that sort of stuff so it gets really hot that's the thing that's uh, shutting down so the air goes in here it's got nowhere to go but out this other side ordinarily on this thing the vent holes are over here somewhere but I've just got it coming out the end because I just want the air to go in and flow through and go over all right here we go let's power it up and see what we get. I'm capturing this video because you can actually uh, stream out of this via the USB. So here we go. Look, you can actually see the... Uh... There we go. Look, you can see the main ASIC right up there heating up. You can see the four uh, front end chips, the four front end hybrids. They're all heating up. The uh, uh, probably the analog to digital converter in there or is the one at the back, the ADC, I can't remember. Um, this one here, that would be the transformer core powering up. Uh, and yeah, some of the front end uh, components there on the power supply. So that's the entire power supply board in there. This is the DC to DC uh, converter powering the main board. So there's some voltage regulators, they're just uh, freestanding TO. 220s there and uh, there we go hopefully can we actually see I think we can see some I think we can see some of this airflow happening here because this is all cold stuff down here but it's it what should be cold but it's not because that airflow is happening and flowing out this side of the board over here there you go so it looks like we are getting to see a bit of airflow and maybe if you use your imagination you can see some heat spreading out that way. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah, I can definitely see a heat pattern flowing out that way. So that's, that is really quite neat. We can leave that uh, running for a bit, of course. And uh, it shouldn't shut down. Like the um, like it does without the case because this is effectively you've got a case on it and that airflow. I mean this that's the thing. This cling wrap is not you know it's not that great. Okay, it's going to have loss in it and everything else, but it allows you to see the uh, thermal profile through there without distortion really and it gets most crucially it does get that airflow happening, which is what you want to test your real product. So that's working really quite well. I'm rather uh, rather pleased with that. There you go. Yeah, all that stuff over there should be, yeah, yeah, you can see it all heating up around here and all flowing out. That is neat. And you can see the fan, of course. You can see the motor in the center of the fan there. Okay, what I'll do now is I will uh, change the image mode because you can see all of the creases. You can see the cling wrap and everything else, you know. It really screws things up uh, because this camera is so good that it has uh, this MSX technology which overlays a true image in the, uh, a true visual image over the top so that you can see more detail and I love it. It is absolutely brilliant. But if we switch to, there it is, thermal MSX and you can see the uh, you can see the physical cling wrap on there, the reflection from my studio lights and the creases and all sorts of stuff. But if we put it in traditional thermal mode, bingo, there it is. And that looks much better. I like it. And hopefully, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell, but you can sort of see the heat spreading out towards this corner of the thing where it's all escaping right out here. So that is brilliant. I mean, that is basically, so you get the benefits of having that case on there and getting your true airflow but look it's like this thermal imaging camera is seen right through the case of the instrument it's fantastic I love it so there you go I hope you found that a useful little tip there of how to see through your product with a thermal imaging camera it works remarkably well actually and yes 
this thing is still going. It hasn't rebooted, so it's working just like the real thing with the case on. Fantastic. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.